Welcome to Let's Talk. I'm your host, Woodrow Thompson. We have a great show for you today. My guest today is Bishop Wendell Brayton with Glorious Churches of Canada. And it's such a privilege to have him with us today. Welcome to Let's Talk. Great to be here. It's great to be here, Your Grace. Thank you for having me. And it's, uh, I'm looking forward to what the show has for us today. Good to see you. I haven't seen you since we sat in the barbershop together. Yeah, we have some good times in the barbershop. Yeah, but I've you have, I noticed you haven't had a haircut in a while. Well, you better look in the mirror. <laughs> well, it's good to have you with us. And good it's to be good here. to be able to talk with you today. Now, I realize that you, you know, when I, when I look at your bio, there's a lot of stuff that you've been engaged in. But mm -hmm. where I want to start first is I love to hear the history behind the man. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, about who you are. I'm a little country boy from Trinidad and Tobago, the Twin Islands, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, wow. and uh, immigrated at a young age with my, my mother to Canada, right. and grew up in Canada uh, for the most part, educated in the United States via basketball scholarship, um, came back with an accounting degree, worked as an accountant for a little while, uh, sought out um, getting going into different areas of my life and, right. and became a police officer and the call of God hit me as I was a police officer and um, that was about 19 what, what year was that wow that was that was a while ago wow. and um, then basically left the police force and have been pastoring and running my own businesses ever since so um, it's been a journey so what was it like making that transition from being a police officer for 12 years and now becoming a minister? It's a, it's a great transition because uh, everybody understands the personality type of a policeman and, and the right. type of individual you have to be to be a policeman. So um, that transformation spiritually was also a transformation personality-wise. Right. But still, as a policeman, as a Christian policeman, you have to have the balance um, of being a good person and being strong enough mentally to, to do the job and to be stern enough to do the job. So it was, it was an interesting shift. My, my colleagues definitely saw the shift oh, yes. and uh, it, you know, it was a completely different person from a guy who was you know, gung-ho, cursing and swearing with his buddies to a guy now carrying around his Bible wow. and talking about Jesus. Wow. Completely different. Now, um, I've always thought that there's some professions that it's difficult to be a Christian while mm -hmm. you're in that profession. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it for you in being a police officer while you're? I, I don't think um, <clears throat> the issue really is it was dealing with all the things, not even the public, but you know, within the police world. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of I would say politics that goes on with with just being a police officer. So keeping your salvation in the midst of right, that, and, right. and at the time with uh, the organization I was with, I was one of the first black officers, and um, I was very pro-black. I had a, had a very robust education on my historicity and who right. I was and, right. and who our people are and I wanted to be a representative of those individuals so the current regime there it was difficult I'll say I'll say that and, and then balancing now the ideologies of um, the world with the faith mm -hmm. um, was hard um, but you know with God you know there's a way and, and he made a way for me right. and ultimately I left the force and took on ministry full-time so I think it was the transition that God was pulling me out of something, putting me into something else. Right. Now, how would you say that being a police officer for 12 years prepared you for ministry? Was there? Absolutely a... prepared me for ministry. It prepared me for life. Um, wow. It gave me the ability to have, because once a police officer, always a police officer. You have discernment. You have uh, the ability to, right. to analyze a room. Right. 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 So um, it, it gave me the ability to, to really be able to even speak to concerns and issues that my constituents and my congregation have now. Um, legal matters, um, life matters. So it was definitely a great training ground um, for the uh, appointment of pastoring and the appointment of being an overseer over churches. Well, uh, I would like to continue to talk with you and also to dive into a little bit about um, uh, what's the church's responsibility 
uh, in the political arena because I know you, you know, you, you looked at that in some ways. Mm -hmm. And there are many people who think that the church should have nothing to do with politics. Right. So we're going to talk about that when we come back after this quick Wonderful. break. Wonderful. One of Canada's best kept secrets in the real estate market is Hamilton, Ontario. But that is about to completely change. Daniel Chin has been Hamilton's real estate entrepreneur for many years, and now he's sharing all of his property secrets so you can create your own substantial wealth through buying investment properties right here in Hamilton. And the best thing is, Daniel will walk you through the process step by step. Step one, he'll source an investment property specifically to suit your needs in a growing area. Step two, he'll analyze profitability so you can obtain the maximum return on your investment. Step three, he'll assist in the process of acquisition and financing. Step four, he'll approach the seller on your behalf and make an offer. Step five, he'll completely and competitively renovate and prepare the property in order for it to return to the market, ready to achieve the highest possible value. Step six, sit back and watch the money roll in. If you've always wanted to get into the real estate investment business but just didn't know how, call Daniel today on 905-537-8202 or email him on danielpchin at gmail.com and we'll get you on the road to financial freedom. Chin Properties, improving properties, improving lives. Your wedding day will be one of the most important days in your life, and we want to make sure that you never forget it. Hello, and welcome to Runway Weddings. At Runway Weddings, creating is our passion, and we would love to capture your unique day so you can look back years from now and enjoy it all over again. We are proud of our team of photographers and cinematographers, all of whom have the expertise to create high energy still and motion pictures that tell a story from beginning to end, based on the love story that has been created by the two of you. With our superior collection of cinematic 4K cameras, movie quality sound, and visual equipment, we are ready to capture your wedding day from every angle to create an artistic blend of photographic, cinematic, and documentary style film that reflects the intimacy of your special day. For more information or to obtain a quote for your big day, call right now, 647-933-8068 or go to the website www.runwayweddings.ca and we will schedule a free consultation. We take the time to get to know you so that we can create an experience of photography and cinematography that you will never forget. Call us now. Welcome back to Let's Talk. My guest again is Bishop Wendell Brayton. It's so good to have you. Now, just before we went to the break, we were talking about, I just mentioned politics, and you see what's happening across the border and mm -hmm. what's happening even here in Canada. Um, what do you think should be the church's responsibility or response to politics? When I ran for uh, election in 2010 in the municipal election in right. the city of Toronto, we had a theme. Right. And the church's theme for that year was capture the culture. Okay. Because the church should speak to the designing of culture. Mm -hmm. Culture should not design the church. Right. And therefore, it is the job of ministry to, to lead, I would say, the march for culture to be designed by the mind of Christ. You see, one of the things that's very important, and it, it speaks to any marginalized community, it speaks to any ethnicity, it speaks to any ideology, right. that if you do not um, make the laws, enforce the laws, and dispense the laws of a culture, you're not part of it. Right. And so the Christian church has to be involved in lawmaking, law enforcing, and law dispensing, or else we are just bystanders within the civilization. But, but I'll push back on that by way of saying the church should be the moral conscience of society. Mm -hmm. What an individual Christian like yourself would do, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But my pushback would be, I don't think that the church should be engaged in politics. The church's pastor 
is the moral conscience of society. However, you as an individual, myself as an individual, may have gifts mm -hmm. that can be used in the political, political arena, but the church should not Well, engage. it's difficult to say that because we are the church. So right. when, when, the church is the, when the church frames thought process, right. now the regular Christians, who we call the regular Christian, right. who has a call to go into politics, right. he is taking the thought process of the church into politics. Okay. So to, to, to dissect the church from him is impossible. So the church, mother church, who is supposed now, when to you teach... Said the, just a bit, when you say the church, you're talking about the corporate church. Yes, the Catholic church, the, okay. the apostolic yes, right, Catholic right. church yes, of which we yeah, represent, right, the Church of Jesus right. Christ, um, that is within the believer. Right. And, and therefore, so the church now should be the guide to its constituency in how to properly um, represent Christ and society within the political agenda. And, and if our politicians don't have that mindset, then the church's voice is not voiced within the laws of the land. And that's the issue that we have today. Okay. How, how do we get the church to uh, come to grips with this? Because there are many believers who just think that politics should have nothing to do with church. There are even Christians who don't vote. Yeah, they don't understand the history, right. the true history of the church. When the church was formed, um, we can go back even to the ecumenical councils of 325 AD. Right. And we say in, in Africa, in Alexandria, we had the church and right. we had the Bishop of Alexandria who was a very political right. individual, right. had to be because mm -hmm. of the Constantinian um, effect of his community and his church. Right. Constantinople, Rome, Antioch, Jerusalem, all these churches were able to both navigate their religious system and navigate what was happening in Rome. Right. So Christians who believe that we should not be part of the political process do not understand that the evolution of how the church became the church. You have to have a voice within society. Right. Right. That's, the, that's our job. Do you think you'll ever pursue politics again? I, I think the way that I will try to affect politics is I will try to form the mind of the next leaders. Okay. And okay. that's what the church should be doing. We should be identifying leaders, the right. Nehemiahs and Ezra's. Right. 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 Ezra was the priest. Right. Nehemiah was of the course. political leader. Of course. And yeah. so we should be now speaking. We, we have this mindset where we say speaking truth to power. But unfortunately, right. power doesn't <laughs> care about right. your truth. Right. You have to speak power to power. Right. And so we must be empowering a generation so that they can go and say, I want to run and I want to make a difference. Right. Now, you just started a theological seminary. Mm -hmm. um, will that be part of the training that you'll give as you prepare the young, the younger generation? Definitely. We have um, courses that speak to that. One of the greatest things of our political seminary is called FTA, Theological Seminary. Right. We're one of the first seminaries to speak to women-focused um, theology. Right. And um, the church and Christianity and Judeo-Christianity is one of the first um, religious movements to empower women and to give women a voice. And so we have to not just think uh, in the gendership of men, but women have a, a very powerful voice today. And we should be, I, I have daughters, I have three daughters, yeah. I want to empower them also. So the theological seminary will be touching on those things, mostly theology, right. um, but we also will be touching on some of the socio-political um, things that the church should touch on in, in areas of courses and degrees, yes. More with Wendell. Bishop Wendell Burton when we come back. Your wedding day will be one of the most important days in your life, and we want to make sure that you never forget it. Hello, and welcome to Runway Weddings. At Runway Weddings, creating is our passion, and we would love to capture your unique day so you can look back years from now and enjoy it all over again. We are proud of our team of photographers and cinematographers, all of whom have the expertise to create high energy still and motion pictures that tell a story from beginning to end, based on the love story that has been created by the two of you. With our superior collection of cinematic 4K cameras, movie quality sound, and visual equipment, we are ready to capture your wedding day from every angle to create an artistic blend of photographic, cinematic and documentary style film that reflects the intimacy of your special day. For more information or to obtain a quote for your big day, call right now 647-933-8068 or go to the website www.runwayweddings.ca and we will schedule a free consultation. 
we take the time to get to know you so that we can create an experience of photography and cinematography that you will never forget. Call us now. TV programs, convocations, conventions, graduations, YouTube commercials, Pinewood Films is a locally owned production company based in Toronto, and we're here to help you capture your event on video. It could be a Saturday or Sunday morning church service, a banquet, a business function, birthday party, even that special wedding day. Absolutely no project is too small or too large. We record and edit all of our footage professionally with high quality HD and 4K cameras that can be used for TV broadcasting or just home viewing. The choice is all up to you. So, what are you waiting for? Call us right now at 647-933-8068 and there's no obligation. Let's talk about your ideas for your next event or project. The number is on the screen. We're waiting for your call. Welcome back to Let's Talk. My guest is Bishop Wendell Brayton. So good to have this conversation with you. It's a big conversation, Bishop. But, uh, Bishop, when you look around our world, and especially in our communities, um, there seems to be this idea that faith doesn't matter. Mm. And um, as, you, as you realize that there's many different aspects to faith, but I'm talking about the Christian faith. Right. How is the Christian faith relevant to the times in which we're living? Well, you know, uh, uh, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be politically correct about this. Sure. Um, when we study our scripture, it, it right. says that it's one faith, right. one Lord, one oh, baptism. Yes. yes. And so faith is resides in something. Right. And it must reside in something that can represent and demonstrate and manifest your faith. Right. Our faith is in Christ. Right. It's in the historicity of Christ. Yes. It's in the power of Christ. It's in the power of a man who came as a man, God as a man, mm -hmm. who was able to affect the world without an army, affect the world without, oh, yes. without great finances and wealth, right. like, like Mansa Musa, who, who the, the, the Arab king who came across Africa, <laughs> affecting the world with right. his great wealth. This man, for three years, did it with nothing. Oh, yeah. Our faith is based on something. And it's been, it's been echoing for 2,000 years, manifesting for 2,000 years. We have faith in something that's real. So we Christians should be bold about our faith in Christ. It seems like we're living in a time where people seem to think that our faith doesn't matter. We, we are too apologetic. Right. Um, we have taken a position of, of tolerance and, and have sat back right. when we have a blessed assurance we right. are constrained knowing that we have the faith in God that is real and definitely I believe boldness is, is what exactly is called for in the last days of the church right now uh, for some time now we have heard this doctrine called a prosperity gospel mm -hmm. uh, what do you think should be the Christians posture when it comes to prosperity I'm not afraid of that word right. and I'm not afraid of that word because Christianity also speaks to ethnicities right and different ethnicities have different realities when it comes to finances right and so we talking we're talking about a marginalized group now of Africans who've come to this hemisphere under enslavement and they have been positioned in a position of no privilege right so prosperity must speak to them right and so the reason that prosperity is a conversation in our community is because we don't have it. So the Christian religion speaks to the fact that God created a man and he gave him dominion. Right. Dominion is of mm -hmm. a king. Mm -hmm. He gave him possession of a realm. Right. So we don't have that dominion sometimes. We don't have the possessionship of certain things. So prosperity has to be an aspect of certain cultures who have been marginalized that hegemony has put them in a position where they haven't had access or resources. Right. So prosperity must be something that we speak about to marginalize people. But wouldn't there need to be a balance when we talk about prosperity? Because you, we, we're talking about the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And for me, the Christian faith first starts with what's happening on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so what I hear in some of, the, uh, some of what you hear on television is that, for example, if you're not prosperous, you're not a true Christian. Right. Meaning that if you don't have wealth right. and prosperity, right. you're not, there's just something you're not doing right. right. The same well. Jesus you just mentioned mm -hmm. 
could almost be viewed as someone who had no place. Mm -hmm. uh, in Bethany, Mary and Martha's, in Lazarus' home, that's where he hung out most of the time. Right. We and have an yet, imbalance. Yes, he, he owned everything. Right. We have an imbalance. We have, right. a, we have a great imbalance when it comes to delineating the faith and sharing the faith. And, and that imbalance has to be checked. I have a saying. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not biblical, but right. it's a saying. And I say success is the ability to prosper continually in this life and the next. Very good. If your success can't take you yes. to the next life, yeah. you never really had right. it. Right. And our Christianity has to be so balanced right. that we realize that what we are aspiring to in respect to, in, in, in respect to prosperity has to take us from this life and to the next. Right. When we look around our communities, there's so much brokenness in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, people seem to have lost hope, mm -hmm. um, especially in our community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's almost as if there's no hope. Mm -hmm. What kind of hope could you offer to our viewers as they're listening to us as we talk? For example, we talk about prosperity, mm -hmm. and they look at us, they said, man, uh, there seems to be no hope for me. How, mm -hmm. how do we help them to gravitate towards hope? After we get up off of our knees, from praying, after we've finished reading right. the 66 books of truth, right. find yourself into a university, right. find yourself in City Hall, right. run for office, right. um, push your children to higher education, right. mobilize yourself to, to share your wealth and create banks and, and, and investment groups. Put your people in a position where they can build upon all the, all the very um, silos of society. Religion is one silo. Right. Law, economics, information, all those things are the silos of society. That's what will bring back hope. The balance of a true society, balancing it in all the areas that cause society to be society. And ultimately, put your faith in him, the, the, the only son of God, right. Christ, God of very God, light of very light. Right. He gives hope. Amen. Yeah. Well, Bishop Wendell Brighton, it's been a pleasure having you with us. Your uh, grace is good to have you. Good hope to have God will continue to bless you and the ministry that you're doing, and especially the Theological Seminary. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Coming up next, we have a special segment with you called Meet the Pastor when we come back. TV programs, convocations, conventions, graduations, YouTube commercials, Pinewood Films is a locally owned production company based in Toronto, and we're here to help you capture your event on video. It could be a Saturday or Sunday morning church service, a banquet, a business function, birthday party, even that special wedding day. Absolutely no project is too small or too large. We record and edit all of our footage professionally with high quality HD and 4K cameras that can be used for TV broadcasting or just home viewing. The choice is all up to you. So, what are you waiting for? Call us right now at 647-933-8068 and there's no obligation. Let's talk about your ideas for your next event or project. The number is on the screen. We're waiting for your call. Your wedding day will be one of the most important days in your life, and we want to make sure that you never forget it. Hello, and welcome to Runway Weddings. At Runway Weddings, creating is our passion, and we would love to capture your unique day so you can look back years from now and enjoy it all over again. We are proud of our team of photographers and cinematographers, all of whom have the expertise to create high energy still and motion pictures that tell a story from beginning to end, based on the love story that has been created by the two of you. With our superior collection of cinematic 4K cameras, movie quality sound, and visual equipment, we are ready to capture your wedding day from every angle to create an artistic blend of photographic, cinematic and documentary style film that reflects the intimacy of your special day. For more information or to obtain a quote for your big day, call right now 647-933-8068 or go to the website www.runwayweddings.ca and we will schedule a free consultation. We take the time to get to know you so that we can create an experience of photography and cinematography that you will never forget. Call us now.
today meet the pastor. We have Bishop Fritz Manning, pastor of the Hamilton Church of Latter Prophecy. Welcome to Let's Talk. Thank you. Thank you. What we want to do is to help people to understand that there's a church in the Hamilton area if they're looking for a church home. Could you tell us a little bit more about the Hamilton Church of God of Prophecy? Well, uh, the church um, is in Hamilton for about um, 40 years now. Right. And um, we're located at 64 and a half Wentworth Street North. Right. Downtown, right in the core area. Wow, so you're, you're in the city. Right in the core. Right. Yeah, yeah. So folks would visit the church. What, 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 what could they look forward to? Well, they could look forward to a vibrant praise and worship. Right. The teaching and preaching of the word and a great fellowship. Okay. So folks who are in the Hamilton area, if they were to show up on the Sunday morning, what time is your services? So Our Sunday school begins at 10 mm -hmm. to 11. Right. And then shortly after our praise and worship, and um, we conclude at 1 o'clock. Okay, good. What's the vision for the church? Well, um, strange you should ask, because we, were, we, we just started reworking a new vision. But right. um, our vision is to live out the great commandment by loving God, loving people, and to make sure that we are fulfilling the great commission preaching, baptizing, and teaching to observe all things. Okay. Um, you know that in today's society, um, church, churches face challenges, especially with our youth. What do you offer the youth in the city of Hamilton? Well, we have a vibrant youth uh, ministry. Uh, I must admit that um, uh, we are now different from those who are facing challenges. Right. Um, our young people up to um, graduating from high school, uh, the fir that first, getting that first job is always a trick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once they get that first job, then you start notice, um, or if they move up right. onto college. Right. Right. But um, we have uh, a youth group, a leadership group, um, and they, they do dramas, they do teaching the word, preaching the word. Um, they do a number of um, different things to attract um, young people. But I, I find that they are very much attracted to the dramas and to the dancing and stuff like those. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. Well, Bishop Fritz Manning, it's been a pleasure having you share with us what the Hamilton Church of God of Prophecy has to offer those mm -hmm. who would visit. And so we'd like to encourage our viewers uh, that are looking for a church home They'll find vibrant preaching, they'll find a vibrant worship, and they'll find a place of fellowship. Yes. That is one. And we look forward to welcoming them. Very good. Yeah. Well, thanks again for sharing with us on Meet the Pastor. Thank you, too. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Let's keep talking.